So that's called Dangerous to Go Alone. That's the title track from John Tracy's latest album. And the man himself joins me in the studio. How are you, sir? I'm well. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So uh, congratulations on the album. Thank that's you. That's the first album you've had that out. Is my, that's my first album, yeah. And it's all acoustic. It's all instrumental music. And it's all original. Wow, okay. It's so, something different. And it really is, because you don't really see a lot of you instrumental know. artists emerging from Northern Ireland, do you? No, not really. I mean, instrumental music was massive in the 60s and 70s, and then it kind of took a dip. So whenever I, I find that whenever people see you with a guitar, they expect you to sing. Yes. It's as if you know the guitar is only an accompaniment yeah. to a singer. But that's not always the case, and I'm trying to push the instrumental side of things. That you can actually you can entertain a crowd purely just with one instrument. So usually when I have a singer-songwriter in, I ask them to tell me the story behind the song. Yeah. Does it kind of work the same when you're writing an instrumental piece? Very much so, yeah, very much so. So the, the whole thing for me, anyway, the whole idea for me is that I try to tell stories without words. Okay. That sounds very poetic, but that is genuinely it. You know, you, I want to make sure to get the same emotion across to an audience that they would get with a singer who's singing words, but purely through music. And it, it seems to be working. Okay, so why was the album called Dangerous to Go Alone? It originally started because it's actually a line from a 1980s video game. Okay. So, I know I'm a wee bit of a geek inside, so <laughs> it, kept, it was a game called The Legend of Zelda, and it's one of the, the first lines that appears in it. But also, it's a it, it was quite symbolic for me because it means it was a yeah it was a symbolism of me moving away and trying to break away from you know doing pubs and doing cover gigs to doing my own stuff and. There's an element of danger involved in that, so it is kind of dangerous to go along. Okay, what about the rest of the songs in the album? Is there kind of interesting stories behind, behind yes, these? Yes, yep. um, well, every single one of them, have all, they all have stories, and uh, I've made sure on the, the inside cover of the, the CD that there's a, a couple of lines explaining each of them. This one jumps out, track number seven, Bittersweet Strawberries and Cream. <laughs> yeah, bittersweet Strawberries and Cream, yeah, that's... Uh, that's a bit of a cryptic one. Um, it was, I wrote that. It's actually one of the first pieces that I ever wrote. And uh, it was at a time whenever I was a wee bit uncertain about a couple of things in life. And the song just fell out. It just it fell out of my hands. And it's a ballad. It's a kind of a love, not, not a love song, but a, like a, a bittersweet song. So I thought that okay. that's it. And it happened around about the time that I first graduated from university. So that's the strawberries and cream kind of thing. All right, OK. <laughs> so what age were you then when you first picked up the guitar? Uh, the guitar, I think it was 13 or 14. And out of all the instruments in the world, why the guitar? Well, I started off on piano. Okay. Um, I've been playing the piano from a very young age. Self-taught, pretty much. My, gra my grandmother, Teresa, who actually is uh, Teresa's hands. Teresa's hands, hands. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's about her. She, she taught me the first couple of notes and then I just sort of took off and did my own thing. But the guitar, there was a neighbour two doors down from us were, were in the street that I kind of grew up on. And I'd never played a guitar before, but I saw him playing. I thought, that's, that's really cool. I want to learn that. And he said, well, here, take that. I have loads of guitars in the house. Take that and bring it, bring it two doors down. You can practice on that one. And I did, and I just, I was hooked. Right, okay, wow. Yeah. How many guitars do you own now? Oh, don't ask. <laughs> don't. <laughs> too many. Although they do say you can never have too many. Because I remember asking Gary Moore the same question. Oh, hey. And he couldn't answer either. It was, yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I would probably be embarrassed to say. Yeah. But they're not all expensive guitars. All right, okay. You know. So would somebody like Gary Moore have been a big influence to you? Gary Moore, not so much. He was more of the, the kind of electric rock side of things, which I love, mm -hmm. but uh, there's not that much of an influence in my playing. I have a lot of respect for, for those mm -hmm. kind of players. But for me, I think the biggest influence was a, an Australian guy called Tommy Emmanuel. Don't know whether you've ever I heard do, him. I do, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he is kind of the, at this stage anyway, he's the kind of pioneer, in my opinion, of this kind of style of playing, and he's influenced thousands of people around the world. Mm -hmm. um, he just has the most amazing style, and again, he does it all on one instrument. And half the time, you know, you'd be sitting listening or watching thinking, there sounds like there's about three or four guitars here. But it makes it entertaining. Yes. So yeah. he was a massive influence on me, definitely. Right. Okay. So now that the album's out and you're gigging all around the place as yeah. well, are you one of the guys now that people go to if they want this special style of guitar playing on their albums and stuff? That would be nice. That would be yeah. nice, yeah. A few people have approached me and I would, I would love for that to continue because I really enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. OK, what about gigs coming up? Is there anything we should know about? Yes, we'll have the Ullapool Guitar Festival, which is in the Highlands of Scotland. That's going to be, I'm playing on the 6th of October, which is my birthday. <laughs> so what a nice retreat. treat. So I'll be playing up in the Highlands on my birthday. OK, you're going to do one more from the album. What are you going to do this time? Uh, I think I'll go for uh, Just Waves. And what's the story behind this one? I don't know. I, it's, it's kind of a, people tell me whenever they listen to it, it sounds like a, a boat going across waves or, you know, it, it kind of has that, I don't know, like epic sort of film soundtrack feel. That's what I'm kind of going for anyway. So 
and I couldn't think of a better title. So a friend of mine just said, why don't you just call it Waves? And I thought, just Waves, that'll do. And if people want to find out more information about you and how to get their hands on the album, how do they do that? You can get me on pretty much every method of social media go on, and you can get me on my website, which is johntracymusic.com, and Tracy spelled with an E as in T-R-A-C-E-Y. Brilliant. So, uh, John, thank you for joining us Thanks on the show today. So here we go, one more time. Here's John Tracy and a track called Just Waves.